Hello, Gothic friend. This is Alisa, and you are in Gothic land. Today, I'm going to bring you a short video to tell you about this month's magazine, February 2023. And this is the first time I'm going to show you the content of this magazine because I feel like there's a lot of people that know about it, but they're still not quite sure what to get from it. And it's always nice to have a visual. So let's go with this little presentation. I'm just going to take you through the magazine very quickly so you can see it. So what we have here is this month's magazine is all dedicated to Carnival because in Spain we celebrate Carnival kind of before the real Carnival and uh, it kind of overlaps this month with the launching of this magazine which is by the way our issue number nine we're already almost very close to the year so magazine nine you are gothic but you don't know it is an online magazine for you if, if you are here for the first time it's an online magazine for creators and curious minds anybody who's interested in the gothic you don't really need to be an expert. You can be a beginner. It's uh, approachable for uh, anybody from different backgrounds. This month, I'm talking to you about Masks Carnival and Your Shadow. And uh, we also talk about music for the Gothic soul. And this time, I wanted to entertain myself a little bit into elaborating on Villa Valo, one of my favorite musicians and my muse, I have to say. I also tell you about an interview that I did a while ago last year uh, to David um, Castleton. And he is an expert in Gothic curiosities and legends uh, connected to churches and graveyards and objects. And it's fantastic. And the last thing is the next part of Andrea's Gothic love story that I started in June. So when you go to the magazine, you just have to go to the first thing you get to see is the editor's letter where I explain to you what is this magazine about and what took me to write it. Uh, a little bit about the magazine as well, what you will learn, the collaborations, if anybody wants to collaborate with me in the magazine somehow. Then I, every month I do a little bit of an introduction uh, welcoming you uh, the month and when it when it's from and, and how long and uh, what it covers so it's always for a month um, a month content connected to what happens between the, the 21st of each month and the next 21st of the next month whatever happens into in, within that time so this month i'm talking to you always from a, a very catchy point of view about what these celebrations mean and what is the purpose of this magazine in that specific month so as I said before, in this edition, it's all about masks, carnival, and your shadow. So we're going to be doing a lot of uh, La Villa Cuaresma, which is what we celebrated last week here in Spain. Uh, music for the Gothic Soul, where I talked to you about Ville Valo, as well as a, an elaborated uh, article before that. Then we move on to an interview with David Castleton about Gothic curiosities and legends. And address a story, as I told you, where she meets a new person, someone that uh, will change everything. And this is the first, I always do like a little bit of an introduction with one of my phrases. And then we move on, on to the first article. As you can see, Masks, Carnival and the Shadow Self uh, is an article where I search for answers about everything humans repress and shows uh, through their celebrations, in this case, Carnival. So I dedicate this whole article to this topic. As you can see, I introduced La Bella Cuaresma, which is a, a Catalan celebration. Um, we talk a bit the, about the philology and psychology behind Carnival. As always, you know that I was covered on those areas. And uh, the celebrity of a quote here by Carl Jung, as you know, um, oh, I put him twice. As you know, I I am starting some courses on Carl Jung to to help you more with your own journey and myself. Then we have the Gothic and um, the connection with Gothic literature and these uh, carnival celebrations. Okay. And then we do a little bit of a journey going back in time. So we're going back to medieval times, Renaissance, uh, Renaissance, sorry, masquerades. And I tell you about Bakhtin and what he talked about when he meant, when he referred to the carnivalesque. Um, then we connect everything with celebrations that we normally do. And we find the Gothic connections, again, as I said, in the literary space now, yes. And I'm analyzing, in this case, a book called Carnivalesque in American Culture, Gothic Literary Studies, which is based on this book here. 
uh, that you can find in Amazon, which actually goes into depth uh, what is the carnivalesque and the connection with the Gothic. The next section then, as uh, this is the end of the of this article and a bit of a bibliography of what I used to write it. And you have a little bit of an advertisement of for my channel. If you're not familiarized with my Gothic channel, you can go here. Uh, Gothic Alice, um, Alice in Gothic Land is my YouTube channel. And then the second article of this month is Music for the Gothic Soul. And an interview at the end by, um, sorry, by me, you know, <laughs> an interview that was done to Ville Valo um, before the launching of his last album. So for me, as I said, uh, Ville is one of my muses and he's always there when I'm writing my fiction. And in this article, I start talking to you a little bit about um, the origins of language, the music as a language, as a way of learning, um, as part of always being musical beings. And then I moved down into finding music in series and programs that we love so much. And it is a coincidence that this, in these three cases, we have three series that I talked to you about, and a film, The Exorcist, as you've probably very familiarized with if you're from my generation. And then we talk about all the influences and origins. And we go back to, for example, Robert Johnson. We also go back to um, English pop music, Gothic music like Bauhaus and other groups, other bands. And then we look into the neuroscience behind Goth and Gothic music. What does that mean? And Again, we refer to the cinema. We see where we can find music in the cinema, how relevant that is to, to convey the message. And we look into the brain and what it does to, to us um, this contact with music. And obviously, we couldn't go without talking about um, Billy Valo. This video appears on available here. Um, but is um, I'll tell you what it is. I'll, I'll modify it in the magazine. You can see what it is, I suppose, because it's a PDF. And is um, I'll let you in the. I'll let you know in the when when Love Said No is one of my favorite uh, songs from Villa. Then what we have is part of that interview that is online that you can find online. Um, and the interview was uh, done, carried out by Belgian Jasper, and you can find that in the YouTube channel, which I also think that I've given you the links for that in the bibliography. So I talk a bit about Ville. I also talk to you about uh, the connection about um, identity because Ville mentions identity in this interview. So I'm referring you back to that article, that sorry, that video that I did a while ago. And then we continue with the article and the lessons that we learn. So this is the video, so if you wanna watch it, that's okay. And the healing side of love, metal and Gothic rock, it's my perception on based on his interview and a few phrases from that uh, interview that are very, very interesting as creators, we can learn so much. And again, I'm gonna connect that with the psychological side of things. And again, with Carl Jung. And again, this is the bibliography and another advert here that you'll find about me helping you if you are struggling with your Gothic creation, if you want to uh, get some help, uh, you just have to write to me, alicegothicland at gmail.com and tell me about your project, what you're struggling with and if you would like me to help you. Then we move on to the interview with David Castleton. Uh, on Gothic Curiosities and Legends. And David was one of the first writers I talked to on Twitter and I bought his book, The Standing Water, and I read it. And then a few months later, I was interviewing him on my channel. And we talked about a lot of things. We talked about his process of creation. We talked about why his interest um, as a child when it all started for him and why this book, um, some writings is done in the past and some prizes is won. Like for example, he won a competition prize for Go Gothic in 2019. And um, he tells us all about his new book, Church Curiosities, that was launched, um, I think it was last year, two years ago. And and he talks, it tells us about uh, the cauldron, which is one of the things that he loves the most from from this book and from these investigations, the pyramids and the dark folklore behind them in different parts of the UK. Here you have a little bit of the difference between the cemeteries in the UK and in Spain. 
This is actually from where I'm from, Badalona, very near to where my my parents are. And again, we go back to the cemeteries and all the symbology. And also, obviously, we refer to the cinema and what happened when in the others, for example, these pictures that were taken of the dead. So we we have a lot of conversation going on there. We move on to his book and the characters and uh, how much is what we find there is connected to his real experience in life. And finally, well, we're moving down to uh, how interesting and how useful it's actually to investigate and to be in this space of the Gothic and how much we can actually learn. We make reference to García Márquez, Borja and Lorca. In this case, we have Lorca because it, these are some of his influences. So he, it was very interesting to know that uh, he was trying to do something similar in, this, in his book, in the sand and water, and he came out a little bit different but still with the same with this kind of influence obviously we talked about all the witchy cauldrons we had to talk about macbeth and that the gothic doesn't really start only in the gothic with the castle of otranto we already have some previous influences and we talked about some of the characters and some of the books he's read like resurrection and why he read that and you also have a connection here you have um, a link to his blog in case you're interested in knowing more and learning more about his uh, his folklore and obviously all these catalog all this magazine is created by with canva so if you're interested in enhancing your creations using canva just use my panel link because it's an affiliate link that will not cost you anything additional but it will Help me gratefully and greatly uh, with my, you know, with my um, contribution with them and and my work that I do there as well to produce all this wonderful magazine that every month, month after month, I prepare for you guys. And then we're moving into my little story that is a continuation. It's, it's been delivered every month. I'll be like in the in Victorian times. You got a bit of my forward of what it means for me writing this story uh, this month, continuing this story. And then you have a little bit more of the story left um, of what the elaborations, we have a few pages of that. And at the end, I am going to recommend you, if you buy the magazine, I recommend you that you submit to one of the conferences I'm really excited to talk about called Fogo, because it's, uh, Fogo stands for folklore, Gothic folklore in Spain, but it's also about presence of the supernatural in Europe and in America. So it's very interesting. I invite you to go and visit that page and maybe to apply or to come and visit. And as always, I hope you like, you know, you like the magazine when you purchase it and that um, exactly that that you enjoy and that you learn loads because at the end of the day um, it's all about learning loads of things and as we as as you read in this and to purchase this magazine all you have to do is to go to my website that i'm just gonna share with you in a moment so all you have to do is go to gothicalice.com it's all in one word but just let me share that screen with you Okay, there we go. So that's it. Let's share that with you. So when you come to the web page, uh, you just have the home page, which is where I tell you about my work, how I help people embrace the dark side, the gothic side to find light in darkness. So you can read all of these and to see what I do and how I do it. And if you go to magazine, this is what you're going to see you have your you are gothic but you don't know it and when you subscribe and download the free sample you can subscribe and then you have access to all of them this is the last one uh, the issue number nine for subscribing uh, means that obviously this is not a free um, magazine a, the free one is the first one the one i wrote in june that as you will see is the longest one then i've been adapting the content as we've been going on and uh, we, we've been going along and um exactly all you have to do is to is just to go there and click the subscribe button if you are still not sure about the content you can just get one one sample that you can have and that's just free and i hope that you like the idea of reading a monthly magazine regarding the gothic because it can help you if you're a creator if you're a curious mind 
or if you're investigating, it can help you many, many ways because there are a lot of links as well. So this is it for this video today. I hope you have enjoyed this little um, view of the February magazine and I hope to see you soon as a subscriber. Thank you. Bye.